it's your girl Tara coming to you from the craftsurgeon.com. Thanks for joining me for another video tutorial. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you a fun fold using the following stamp set called Whiskey Business. Now, this is a great masculine stamp set. This was like love at first stamp because my husband loves whiskey and I knew I wanted this um, at least for Father's Day. So I bought it. And now that I have broken it in because I created his awesome card now i am free to share with the world all of the different cards that i've made and i will share if i can remember at the end of this video i'll share um some additional um samples that i've created using this awesome set now this set is uh like i said it's called whiskey business it's clean mount and it comes with these two awesome whiskey um themed images here and then there's like some wood grain and i'm not quite sure this is like wood I'm not a whiskey drinker, so I feel like this is whiskey themed, but there's this cute little image here. And then I love the, the sentiments. <clears throat> we have your top chef, cheers to you, uh, sending you an old fashioned birthday card, being a dad is whiskey business, which is what I used on his Father's Day card. And then we have straight up, you're the best. So I love, love, love this stamp, this stamp set. It comes with a total of nine stamps. Now, let's talk about the card that I'm gonna show you guys today. So this card, is something that I've been wanting to kind of experiment with for a while now. Now, usually in my videos, I do like the standard A2 size card, right? But I wanted to venture out and do something a little different and do a fun fold. Not only a fun fold, but this is called a double slider card. And oh my gosh, I love it. I saw it and I was like, I gotta do that at least one day. So I decided to, um, to add some components of the card that I did along with um, inspiration that I found on Pinterest and on our demonstrator plan in place with like how to color the whiskey um, inside of the bottles and stuff. And I decided to put that all into one card and create this fun fold for you guys. Now down below, if I can find the links for everything and everybody who I pulled inspiration from, I will have that linked below. Um, I will tell you that the fun fold portion of this card, I did get the measurements and stuff from Dawn on Dawn Stampin' Thoughts, so I'll have her link down below. And then I have to find the individual who actually had a card that had like the... Um, the coloring of the whiskey bottle and then like the blending and stuff in the background she created a card not and her name has slipped my mind I, I don't I don't know um I don't remember but I will try my best to find out who um who created the initial card where I saw these um these techniques used on um or used by and so here we go this is what I came up with okay so using all of those techniques and Don's measurements oh look how awesome that is now i'm not gonna lie when i first saw this card it seems like it's very very challenging and difficult but i promise you guys it is not okay so stick around because i'm going to share with you guys how to create the fun fold along with how to use certain um techniques to create the color of the whiskey and get this um this blended background as you can see here so stay tuned and let's get stamping all right so there are quite a few measurements with this that we want to take note of when we're creating this card okay so um as we're going i'm going to get share with you guys the measurements they are similar to what um what i saw in the initial video that i um used to create this project um which i will um i think i mentioned this earlier i've done so many retakes of this video is ridiculous um but I have Dawn's video posted down below in the description box as well, just in case you want to see her instructions too. Um, but starting out with this, so as you notice, we have the slider component, okay? So I'm going to show you guys how I cut um, the base for this and the, um, and the mats for this, okay? So what I did was I started out with a piece of early espresso cardstock. This measures eight and a half inches by 11 inches. And now I'm going to cut this down, or excuse me, <laughs> uh eight and a half by 11 inches excuse me and i'm gonna cut this down by five and a half inches by 11 okay so i'm just gonna cut this right on in half hot dog style yep so at five and a half we're gonna cut it just like that now don't throw away this piece because you're gonna need this all right so then we're gonna flip this little guy on the 11 inch side so let me open up the little arm here on my trimmer. And now on the 11 inch side, we're gonna score at the following spots, okay? We're gonna score at three and a half inches. 
We're gonna score at seven and one eighth of an inch. Make sure I don't grab that, that cutting blade. I'm gonna be crying. Then we're gonna score at 10 and 5 eighths. And that is the mark after that 10 and a half point, okay? All right, so we got our card base. Now we're going to cut our mats down. Like I said, don't throw away that, that extra piece because we want minimum waste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out two pieces that measure three by five, okay? So it's already measuring by three. That's the part that we cut off, three inches. And I'm gonna just cut down two of these at five. Just like that. So the only thing that should be left over is this little piece, this little guy here. All right, so we're gonna sit these to the side. Then the next measurement that you're going to need, and I'm looking for my wispy white piece, is uh, the mats. So the mats, as you can see here, you have the the basic, uh, the first mat, which is an early espresso. Then we have this little whisper white piece here. These pieces are going to measure two and three quarters by four and three quarters. And you'll need two of those. So we're gonna just measure these out. Whoop, I just slide a hand, two and three quarters. And two and three quarters. There we go. Then you'll need an extra piece here for your um, stamping. So I'm going to use that for that. Okay. And then I've already done this ahead of time. I've already cut out a piece of Whisper White that measures four and a half inches by three and a quarter inches. And that's the piece that we're going to be doing our stamping and our embellishing and all that good stuff on. And then of course you'll need a piece of designer series paper. This comes in uh, from the Inga Taste DSP um, paper pad. And this piece measures one inch by three and a half inches, okay? Um, and I think that's basically all the cardstock that we're going to need for this particular card. So let's go ahead and oh, before I put this away, I do want to let you guys know too, for the, mecha the mechanical part of the card to get it to slide like that, you will need a cello bag. Now these bags can be found in, our, in the annual catalog. There are six by eight cello bags, okay? And there's quite a few that you get in the bag. I think it's like 40 or 50 of them you get in a pack. And so what we're gonna do is before we get into our, our blending and our stamping, we're gonna cut this little guy down. So what I like to do is I like to um, come over here and I like to have the open end to the left, okay? Cause it's just easier to cut. I don't have to, you know, do a lot of fiddling with the closed end. So I'm working with the open end and then I'm going to cut off a piece that measures one and three quarters of an inch. I think that's the right one. Let's see here. I think that's right one and three quarters yep that's about it i wrote down one and one quarter but it's not one and one quarter it's one and three quarters all right so we're going to sit our trimmer and stuff to the side and then what you're going to do with this little cello piece here is we're going to actually cut it apart so i'm just going to use my paper snips and cut off that little piece like that so it opens up just like that okay and if you want to take your bone folder, you can and try to flatten out that little crease there, make it flat. You can do that as well. Kind of helps. All right. And so this little piece is going to go, uh, is what's going to hold our flaps and allow them to move. Okay. All right. So now that we have all of the measurements and all of our cardstock and stuff cut out, let me go ahead and share with you guys how we're going to decorate our mats and then we're going to form the card base. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create our, um, our blended background onto our Whisper White pieces that go on the inside of our card base, okay? So what I did for this is I used the following inks I used Cinnamon Cider, which is one of our new in colors, and Bumblebee, which is also another one of our new in colors. And then I'm pulling in my makeup brushes that I got off of Amazon. I'll have those linked down below in the description box as well. And we're gonna go ahead and create our blended background. So I'm gonna start off with the lightest color first. We're gonna start off in Bumblebee. And I'm gonna take a little bit of um, color on my yellow brush. 
And in the bottom right corner of one of these pieces of Whisper White, I'm gonna go ahead and just sponge that on in a circular motion. I love these makeup brushes just because they are beautiful. I love the way they blend. And we're gonna do the same thing in the opposite corner of the second piece. And since I'm, <laughs> since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna flip it around a little bit. There we go, just like that. And now we're done with that. We're gonna set that to the side. And then for our cinnamon cider, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna go over that bumblebee. It gives it kind of like a old time, um, vintage distress type look. I love it. Okay, there we go. All right, and then we're gonna close this little guy up. Now we're gonna do our uh, embossing with our white with our white powder. Now before I begin, I'm gonna take my powder, my embossing buddy, and I'm just gonna set this and run this right over that ink that I just laid down because what tends to happen is this ink is sometimes still wet and I don't want my powder sticking in places where it doesn't belong. So I'm just treating it before I start stamping. All right, then I'm going to take my Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp two of these glasses down. One's going to be kind of kitty corner just like that, peeking up out of the corner and the other one is going to be looking or stamp down in the opposite direction, but I'm being careful not to overlap them. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this little guy. This one right here, it's gonna come peeking up through the corner like that. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but I can tell. You can see the white or the wet part of it. All right, and then we're gonna sit that stuff to the side, just like that. Then we're gonna take our powder our white powder and we're going to coat our stamped images. There's the first one. This is the second one. I like to do it two or three times just to make sure it's good to go. I probably got powder everywhere, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, then we're going to heat emboss it. So we're gonna set the powder. All right, there we go. Then we're gonna go ahead and adhere these little guys onto our mats. All right, so let's set those to the side. We're gonna need those in a moment, but not right now. Now it's time for us to create our card base. So what I'm going to do is pull in a piece of early espresso, and I'm gonna take my bone folder, and we're gonna create crease all of those lines. Now, I'm going to flip it so that way the little teeny flap is over to my right. And I'm gonna take my two inch circle punch and at the top of the center um, panel, I'm gonna punch a little notch with my circle punch, just like that, okay? Then with my, I think this is like a, some sort of label punch I thought I labeled this little guy but I guess I didn't there it looks just like this I'm gonna take this little guy and on the flat that's all the way over to the left I'm going to punch out some notches now these notches I'm only going halfway on this punch okay just halfway creating a little divot I'm trying to line it up as best as I can just like that and this is just gonna help me 
um, or guide me to place my cello bag down, which is what we're about to do now. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little cello bag piece and I am going to attach it to or over those notches, just like that. Now, one thing that you wanna be mindful of, okay, is just to make sure that you don't pull it too taut because the idea of this is for it to slide smoothly around the cardstock, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna pull it, and then I'm gonna give it just a little bit of um slack okay so we're gonna do it like that then i'm gonna take my stamp and seal just like that and then i'm going to ah it's stuck to it try not to pull it too tight <laughs> that is the goal here and I'm gonna pull it, that way it still has a little bit of leeway. So when it goes around this card, it's not pulling on the card stock. Y'all see how it's, it's going around smooth? And then I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit, just like that, and I'm gonna cut off this excess, being mindful not to cut the actual band itself. Then we'll have to start this process all over again. Okay. That looks good. Looks good enough to me. Okay. Now, when you go to close this, it's like that. When you flip it over, this is going to be the front side. This is the part that has the notch in it, okay? Now, this is where it gets a little funky, okay? Because I want to lay down these, um, these mats. All right. So, I want to make sure that my mats come out <laughs> the right way. So, I want this. Let me flip it this way. So, if you're looking at the front of the card, I want this mat to come out this way and i want this mat to come out this way okay so when we put them inside of our card that is what we're going to that's how we're going to set it all right so to do that i am going to work reverse okay so this is like i said this is now facing the back okay so this is the front side and this is the back so i'm going to lay down my piece of or my mat down no not that way hold on i got it <laughs> i promise so i'm gonna like fold this in as if without closing the back part so i'm gonna fold this in like i'm looking straight at the card from the front view and i'm gonna slide this piece right in front of that clear baggie like that this is how i'm going to make sure that i have it all facing the right direction then when i flip it over this other piece is going to go close to that end just like that and so when i go to open it it's going to be facing the front just like that this piece is in front and this other piece is in back Okay, so now when I go to attach this down, this is exactly the way and the direction it's supposed to be facing, okay? So I'm going to carefully flip this little guy up just like that, holding on to that back mat. All right, so now I am going to line up my front piece up so that way it's flush against the, the notch here, okay? The, edge, the edges must be flush. Okay. And then I'm going to take my stamp and seal plus and I'm going to apply a little bit of adhesive right down here at the bottom, just like that. And then I'm going to carefully flip this little guy over, picking up that middle piece. And you see when I when I closed it, that piece is still facing upwards. So it should look like this. Y'all see it? And then when I go to pull it, it should rotate. Okay, here we go. 
All right, and now we're gonna close this back, this little flat back down. Hopefully you guys are understanding this. Sometimes I don't explain the best of ways. All right, so now this one, we're going to apply our adhesive right here at the top. But we wanna make sure this piece is still flush. We wanna make sure this piece is flush with this edge. And this piece is gonna be flush with the bottom edge. So, we're gonna guesstimate where we're putting our adhesive. Just like that. And then we're gonna flip it face down. And we're gonna line this little guy up right with the edge of that card. Just like that. And so when we pick this up, it should look like that. All right. Now, we're gonna flip this little guy over and we're gonna see, I'm gonna close it as if we are actually assembling our card. So you wanna make sure this little flap is not um, glued to that second layer. So when you fold this in, you wanna make sure that it's not glued to that mat or it's not gonna move. You wanna make sure that it's glued to that top piece that's folded in. So we're gonna try this out. Let's see if it works works right. Hopefully it's, there's no lagging or tacking. Okay, so we're gonna work it. We gotta work it a little bit. Work with it a little bit, kind of get an idea and a feel for the sliding part. Break it in a little bit. There we go. Smooth selling, there we go. Now see how smooth it is? Okay. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can uh, finish assembling our card. So I'm gonna take my seal plus. Come on now. And I'm gonna put some adhesive right here on the edge. And we're gonna fold this little guy in. And like I said, be mindful not to tape it on top of that, that matte piece that's on the inside. And we're just gonna stick it closed just like that. There will be a little bit of bowing, okay? But it should, for the most part, sit flat. All right, so now, when you have your card and you go to, to pull it out, it should be able to pull out smoothly. There we go. You see that? Isn't that cool? All right. So now, let's go ahead and finish decorating. So we're gonna sit our card base to the side and we're gonna take our four uh, and a half inch piece and we're gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment onto here. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and glue down my piece of designer series paper. Just like this, we're gonna glue it right down here at, close to the bottom edge. It's kind of like a tabletop a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna do a technique called markering. So with markering, I'm going to be taking my Stampin' Right markers, which is great for two, uh, when a stamp set or a sentiment has two different types of fonts, or if you want to color certain parts of your stamp a different color, that's what these markers are great for, not just writing. So I'm gonna take the brush tip of my Bumblebee, and then I have Early Espresso here. And I'm gonna take the Bumblebee, and I'm gonna color the straight up. And then I'm gonna take the um, the early espresso and color the bottom part of the sentiment. You're the best. Just like that. Then I'm going to stamp this little guy right up here in the corner. Just like that. Straight up, you're the best. Isn't that cute? So stinking adorable. All right, so we're going to sit those to the side or sit that to the side. And then we're going to pull in our piece of Whisper White, our little scrap piece. And we're going to stamp in Memento Tuxedo Black ink, both our decanter and our whiskey glass, just like that. It doesn't matter how you stamp it, we're gonna cut it out anyway. There's no dies for this set, so you're gonna have to fuzzy cut them out. And then to color, I'm using the following Stampin' Blends. I'm using um, Daffodil Delight, the dark. I'm using the Combo Pack in Cinnamon Cider. And that's basically it, okay? 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the lightest color first, and that's the Daffodils of Light. I'm going to color in all of the, um, the whiskey. Then I'm going to use my dark to create um, the outline. And then I'm going to go in side of that line with my light. And then I'm going to blend it all back out with my Daffodil Delight. Right, so there you go so that is our whiskey that uh, we colored with our Stampin' Blends so now I don't know if you guys notice but these bottles or the decanter and the glass are both kind of shiny so what I did was I went over my image with Versamark and then I added some clear powder to it and heat set it just to give me that shiny effect. So while that's kind of cooling off a little bit, we're going to go ahead and flip our big piece over and we're going to pop this little guy up with some dimensionals. And we're going to stick this little guy right on top of our card base, just like that. All right, there we go. Okay, and then we're gonna take our paper snips and we're gonna cut this little guy out. All right, so now that we are done with that, we're gonna go ahead and pop our whiskey bottle and our glass up with some dimensionals. All right, and there you go. Now here's the optional part. Um, I'm gonna leave the, the flap alone, but you could poke a hole in the in the side of it so that way you have something to pull on it from um, like a little piece of ribbon or thread but for this particular card I'm just gonna leave it as is and we're just gonna use um, the flap or the mat to pull it out all right guys so that's basically it let's take a final look at our card so today we created or I showed you how to create a double slider card with the help of Don, Stampin' Thoughts. <laughs> Very masculine card, great for Father's Day, male birthdays, any whiskey lovers that you have um, or that you know and love. So really, really awesome card. I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. It used the stamp set Whiskey Business from the 2020 to 2021 annual catalog. I love this set. I think it's a great addition um, for any craft stash because it's masculine. And you know that I say that it's not just for guys. Girls like whiskey too, so I can't leave them out. But this is an overall great, great set. So if you don't have it, be sure to get it because I will have it along with all of the supplies linked down in the description box below. Uh, that'll take you straight over to my online store where you can place a purchase and I greatly appreciate it. 
And if you do decide to place a purchase in my online store, don't forget to use the host code if your order is less than $150. If it's over $150, don't use the code because then you qualify for stamping rewards. And don't forget that we do have, or Stampin' Up! has some awesome promotions going on this month. So there's the kickoff celebration that is happening from now until the 30th of June when you shop or you host and you um, and your, your order or your party qualifies for the $250 amount, you get to, um, you'll get extra Stampin' Rewards on top of what, um, what you already get for um, your minimum qualifying order. It was just extra $25, which is awesome. Also, don't forget that Stampin' Up! is also doing a, a starter kit promotion where um, where not only do you get the customizable uh, starter kit for $99, you get to pick $125 worth of product, but you can also get a free stamp and tool bundle, meaning a stamp set and a punch or a stamp set and a die set for free on top of all of those goodies that, you, um, that you're getting in your starter kit. And last but not least, I do want to let you guys know about Paper Pumpkin. We're in a new promotion period, um, the sign-up period for July's kit. And you have until the 10th to sign up. And next month's kit is themed Fireworks, Fireflies, and Ferris Wheels. It's a gorgeous kit well, from what I'm looking at, all these images and the graphics um, and the sneak peeks. There's some beautiful colors in here. And there's um, supplies in here to create like little paper lanterns, which will be great for July. Because, of course, you know we got like... Um, summer nights where you guys will probably be doing picnics and stuff so that you can put like little land uh little lights inside of the little paper lanterns which will be a lot of fun but anyways so i will have links down below for all of this information that i'm telling you guys about but other than that guys that's all i got for you for now so with that being said see you guys next time thanks for watching and happy stamping